Did Brushy Bill Roberts and Billy the Kid look alike? In this episode, we will examine the facts and weigh the evidence. But first, what did Billy the Kid look like, and how exactly do we know this? Any discussion about Billy the Kid's physical description must start with his famous photograph. So let us begin by discussing the facts surrounding it and its providence. Throughout the years, there have been numerous purported photographs of the legendary outlaw, Billy the Kid. However, only one has been almost unanimously accepted as being the only authenticated photograph of the Kid by researchers and historians. This photograph is known as the Dedrick Upton Tintype. The Tintype was reportedly taken just outside of Beaver Smith's saloon in Fort Sumner, New Mexico, in late 1879 or early 1880. It is believed that four copies were made. One Billy kept for himself that was later taken by Pat Garrett when he arrested the kid on December 23, 1880 at Stinking Springs. One went to Delavina Maxwell, one to Patrick McGraw, and the final one was given to Billy's friend, Dan Dedrick, which is the only one to survive as the other three have been lost to history. In 1930, Dan Dedrick gifted the tintype to his nephew, Frank Upham, who kept it until 1947, giving it to his sister-in-law, Elizabeth, who, unaware of its importance, kept it in a cedar box until loaning it to John Meggs of the Lincoln County Heritage Trust in 1986. By this time, the tintype was in bad shape. In an August 2012 Wild West Magazine article titled, Shooting Billy the Kid, author Richard Weddle gave the following account of the tintype's condition. Quote, Exposure to bright light, air, and changing temperatures had dimmed the image. The protective outer layer of varnish had long since rubbed off. Coating the surface of the plate was a century of fingerprints and accumulated grime that had fused with the imaging silver. Someone had punched holes through all four corners, apparently to display the tintype, causing bends and crimps across the plate, in turn creating visual distortions. Rust was emerging from dents, nicks, and abrasions. These were old injuries that had been left festering for decades, end quote. The damage and defects described by Weddell, as well as distortions caused by some of the original photographer's methods, concealed some of Billy's true facial features. According to a May 2007 article in True West magazine titled, The Many Faces of Billy the Kid, author Robert G. McCubbin writes, quote, In the tintype, a reflector screen has been placed next to the kid. It should not have appeared in the finished photo. This lighting apparently caused the kid's jawline to be indistinct. Many have interpreted his face to be asymmetrical. Mistakes in the chin and jaw by photographers attempting to retouch the photo and by engravers and artists attempting to duplicate the photo have caused most of the confusion about the kid's appearance. His face has been made to look lopsided, with a long, wide, and ugly jaw. Over the years, dozens of old photos of men with a long jaw have been proclaimed to be the long-lost photographs of Billy the Kid. In reality, they look nothing at all like him. End quote. The most frequently used image of Billy the Kid is the tintype version retouched by Noah H. Rose, who, according to McCubbin, quote, distorted it almost beyond recognition. Since the 1930s, the Rose copy has been the most frequently used image of the Kid, understandably bringing forth comments such as, the Kid looked like an adenoidal moron or a cretin, End quote. Experts also noted that the photograph contained numerous scratches and streaks that distorted some of the facial features of the man in the photograph, primarily the chin and jaw. This is important because many supporters of the historical status quo who dismiss Robert's claim to being Billy the Kid often try to claim that his chin and jaw are different than the man depicted in the tintype. Perhaps this is why Paulita Maxwell told Walter Noble Burns that the photograph wasn't a fair representation of Billy when she described the man in the tintype's face as looking roguish and uncouth, whereas Billy had a pleasant and boyish face. Perhaps it's why members of the Jones family didn't endorse the photograph as being Billy the Kid, but rather claimed that the man in the top right-hand corner of this photograph was Billy the Kid. The point of all this being that while the man depicted in the tintype is most likely Billy the Kid, it is deeply flawed and is difficult to compare with any degree of accuracy using the naked eye. In 2011, the Dedrick Upton tintype was purchased by billionaire William Koch for $2.3 million. With that said, William Henry Roberts, aka Brushy Bill Roberts, possessed the same general appearance as Billy the Kid. Both men were described as being the same approximate size and general description. For instance, 
In the book Alias Billy the Kid, author C.L. Sonnichson and William B. Morrison described Roberts as being, quote, slim, spry, and very muscular, and at 90 years of age, he was in excellent physical condition and stood straight as an arrow, about 5 feet 8 inches tall in cowboy boots, end quote. Author William A. Tunstall interviewed Roberts' former doctor, W.F. Hafer, and the man who prepared his body for burial, Wayne Rutledge, who both confirmed Robert's height. Following Billy the Kid's capture by Sheriff Pat Garrett in December 1880, J.H. Kugler of the Las Vegas Gazette interviewed the Kid and included the following description, quote, He is about 5 feet 8 or 9 inches tall, slightly built and lithe, weighing about 140, end quote. One of Billy the Kid's most prominent features is his trademark protruding front teeth which are clearly visible in his famous photograph, The Dedrick of Intenti. Likewise, William Henry Roberts also possessed such teeth, until Dr. Cruz, a dentist in Gladewater, Texas, removed them in 1931. In a notarized affidavit dated December 12, 1951, DeWitt Travis of Longview, Texas, made the following statement about Roberts' teeth. Quote, He had peculiarly shaped teeth, with two large teeth protruding outward from under the upper lip and a large tusk on each side of his upper jaw, the teeth having been extracted in 1931 by Dr. Cruz, Gladewater, Texas, end quote. Apparently, Roberts retained his removed teeth as a keepsake because following his death in 1950, the teeth were discovered by relatives immersed in a jar inside a trunk containing his belongings. In a letter dated March 31, 1977, from William B. Morrison to Ola M. Everhard, quote, we found the four large teeth that Billy had extracted in glade water in the bottom of his trunk, but I never received them. I was in Mexico when notified of the death and burial of Mrs. Roberts by her daughter living in Temple. I would like to know if DeWitt Travis has Bill's things. End quote. Another often described and unique physical characteristic of Billy the Kid are his large protruding ears, with the left ear protruding noticeably further from the head than the right. Likewise, Robert's ears possess these same unique characteristics. It has often been reported that Billy the Kid possessed rather large wrists and disproportionately small hands. It was also stated that the Kid was able to fold his hands in such a way that they were made narrower than the wrists, enabling him to free himself from handcuffs. According to Sonichson and Morrison, Roberts also possessed, quote, small neat hands with well-shaped fingers, unusually large wrists, heavy forearm, and well-developed biceps, End quote. When questioned about his ability to free himself from handcuffs, Roberts demonstrated to Morrison how he was able to accomplish this. Morrison recorded the following observation. Quote, Bill laid his thumbs inside his palms and held out his hands. The big wrists merged into the small hands without a bulge. Roberts then asked, Did you ever see anybody else who could do that? To which Morrison replied that he had not. End quote. The eyes of Billy the Kid have been described as being bluish-gray, with tiny spots of brown in them. According to Morrison, Sonichson, and descendants of Roberts, Brushy Bill's eyes were the same color as the kid's eyes were said to be. Severo Gallegos knew the kid during the Lincoln County War days and was an eyewitness to his famous escape from the Lincoln County Jail. In April 1950, William V. Morrison brought Brushy Bill to Rio Doso, New Mexico to meet with Gallegos in an effort to identify the man. Before the meeting commenced, Gallegos told Morrison, quote, if I could look into his eyes, I could tell for sure if he was really Billy. Billy had small brown spots in the blue of his eyes. End quote. When Gallegos examined Robert's eyes, he proclaimed, quote, That is Billy the Kid, all right. Only Billy has eyes like that. End quote. Gallegos also stated that not only did Roberts look like Billy the Kid, but added that Roberts walked like him, talked like him, and even laughed exactly like Billy the Kid. To quote W.C. Jameson in his book, Billy the Kid Beyond the Grave, quote, Some 70 years following the alleged death of Billy the Kid, William Henry Roberts manifested virtually every physical characteristic of the famous outlaw, end quote. According to most historical accounts, Billy the Kid received multiple gunshot wounds during his time in New Mexico. Billy is said to have been clipped through the hip while retrieving his weapon from Sheriff Brady's body. When Morrison was examining Roberts' body for identifying scars, he noticed a bullet scar on his hip, to which Roberts explained, quote, That scar was from the time I run onto the street at Lincoln to take the guns off the body of Sheriff Brady. Billy Matthews ran behind an adobe wall and fired. His shot went through the flesh of this hip and then hit weight. I was not hurt, 
but wait was laid up a few days, end quote. Roberts continued to describe how he earned his scars, quote, Here's one I never took out. You can feel it right here. The slug entered just inside my left knee, going downward and lodging in my calf muscle. I got in a fight in a mountain pass northwest of Tularosa, where we sold them some stolen cattle to that man Pat Coughlin, end quote. This wound also coincides with historical accounts of Billy the Kid's gunshot wounds. Roberts possessed a total of 26 scars from bullets and knives. Wayne Rutledge, the man who prepared Roberts' body for burial, confirmed the number of scars Roberts' body possessed to researcher and author William Tunstall, who stated that he, quote, had never seen a body with so many scars from bullets and knives, end quote. Both Billy the Kid and Brushy Bill Roberts were described as being outgoing and friendly, but with quick tempers, fast talkers with high-pitched voices, lovers of music and dancing, and both were fluent in both English and Spanish. While these physical similarities might not prove William Henry Roberts was Billy the Kid, they are important because Roberts physically fit the description of Billy the Kid, and when considered with the additional evidence, its importance cannot be overstated. In 1990, Dr. Scott T. Acton and Dr. Alan Bovic conducted a photo comparison study of the Dedrick Up and Tintype, along with two photographs of William Henry Roberts, a purported photograph of Billy the Kid when he was a child, and as a control, the study included photos of several male college students who were of similar age, size, and appearance as Billy the Kid was reported to be. The study was conducted at the Laboratory for Vision Systems and Advanced Graphic Laboratory at the University of Texas, Austin, and was supervised by the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering. The study was done using the computerized facial pattern recognition systems developed by Towns and Kaya and Kobayashi, and is statistically proven at more than a 92% rate of success. In fact, these systems have been used by various law enforcement agencies such as the CIA, FBI, Scotland Yard, and Interpol, among many others. It has served as a useful tool in identifying fugitives in disguise, as well as missing persons. Furthermore, these systems have been used in airports around the world to identify fugitives and terrorists attempting to board planes. The systems are so precise that they can't be fooled by age, facial hair, plastic surgery, or other cosmetic alterations. The process involves scanning and digitizing the photographs into a 512 by 512 byte image, computing the LOG, or Laplacian of a Gaussian edge map, identifying reference points such as jaw width and internal and external biocular breadth, determining the distance between the features, and finally computing an error estimate for the match. It measured and compared nine facial features, bizygomatic breadth, or cheekbones, intrapupillary distance, measures from the middle of one pupil to the other, internal biocular breadth, or distance between the inner corner of the eyes, external biocular breadth, or the distance between the outer corners of the eyes, nose breadth, or the distance between the two most lateral points on the wings of the nostrils, mouth breadth, or the distance from one edge of the mouth to the other, jaw width, mid-lip to chin distance, mid-lip to nose distance, and nose length. Distances between the features were normalized so that the exact distance of the center of the eyeballs in each image, or interpupillary distance, was 100 pixels or picture elements. All subsequent measurements were likewise in pixels, and relative of the intrapupillary distance. These methods allow the system to overcome the issues regarding the quality of the Dedrick Upton tintype image. The analysis concluded that William Henry Roberts and Billy the Kid were a statistical match. Compared to the Billy the Kid tintype, Roberts' measurements show a remarkable similarity, and of all the individuals compared in the study, he was the only one to match with the Dedrick Upton tintype. According to analyst Dr. Scott Acton, the study, quote, irrefutably shows that Roberts and the Kid are a very close match, and the similarity between the facial structure of William Henry Roberts and the man in the tintype is indeed amazing, end quote. The primary source of error between the three images exists in the photograph of Roberts in his 80s and involves the bizygomatic breadth. The bizygomatic breadth, however, can increase with weight gain, according to Acton who noted that, quote, the picture of Roberts in his 80s shows more body fat than the man in the tintype, end quote. The slight difference between the mid-lip to chin distance can easily be accounted for by dental work performed. Roberts had no teeth when the photograph was made. 
In Billy the Kid Beyond the Grave by W.C. Jameson, Jameson states, quote, On March 1, 1996, the results of the University of Texas Austin photo comparison study, along with other evidence, were presented to Andre McNeil, Chancery Judge of Arkansas's 12th Judicial District, and noted Arkansas attorney Helen Rice Grinder. McNeil and Grinder, both impartial observers and both experienced in handling and making determinations on evidence, stated that based on the study, the case for William Henry Roberts and Billy the Kids being the same man was, quote, strong, substantial, and excellent, end quote. The methods used in the study were peer-reviewed and published in the following publications. A basic study on human face recognition by Kaya and Kobayashi and Frontiers of Pattern Recognition by Santosi Watanabe. Furthermore, the analysts who conducted the facial recognition study were completely impartial. They were not historians, nor did they have a fight in the Billy the Kid Brushy Bill Roberts debate. It should be noted that the facial recognition system utilized by the University of Texas Austin study is a very complex and expensive system and is only available to select law enforcement agencies and research facilities. Most internet photo comparisons are usually conducted by amateurs using nothing more than Photoshop or GIMP. Some even still use the antiquated technique of drawing straight lines across the pupils seeing if they line up without making adjustments to scale or accounting for things like head tilt or the subject not looking straight ahead. In summation, while this evidence doesn't alone prove that Brushyville Roberts was Billy the Kid, it does serve as a vital piece of supporting evidence to validate his claim. And this evidence, when considered with the additional compounding evidence in support of his claim, overwhelmingly shows that the evidence in favor of Roberts being the kid far outweighs the evidence against it.